planning an event and wondering how you can give your attendees the best experience possible? Take advantage of customized meetings with Hilton that make it easier than ever to incorporate health, wellness, and great breaks. Hilton will help you build an extraordinary meeting that attendees will remember. To book your next meeting or event, go to meetings.hilton.com. Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. Here are your hosts, BizBash CEO David Adler and Editor-in-Chief Beth Kormanick. Hi, David. Hey, Beth. Here we are, another Gather Geeks podcast. Our guest is Andy Marcus of Fred Marcus Studio, a New York-based photography and videography company that specializes in weddings and other social events. The company's photographers travel all over the world for high-end destination celebrations, and clients have included Donald Trump and Jared and Ivanka Trump. He's going to talk about the business aspects of event photography. So, David, yeah, this, this conversation is more about photography for social events and how to make it in the business. Yeah, no, it's a real entrepreneurial story, a generational entrepreneurial story. In fact, many of these people that were photographers, um, they do multiple generations and people know them forever. Right. He is the second generation of a third generation business. Yes. And the corollary on the client side is that they often service multiple generations of right, clients right. as a result. I think that that is kind of... The big holy grail in our business is lifetime value of the customer. Even if it's a corporation, you end up doing their social events and their business events and you be- develop the relationships and they trust right, you. Right. And in the conversation, you tease this with him as a tell all. And, you know, indeed, in the end, we're going to get a little gossipy as oh, yeah. uh, he talks about work for various Trump family weddings and celebrations and, and celebrities as well, other celebrities as well. Yeah. I was a little bit like, you really are telling me all about the. Vanka Trump, Jared Trump wedding. It was very interesting and uh, let people listen for the interesting uh, data that will come in the conversation. Great. Let's listen. So what is the, sort of give us sort of the elevator pitch on what kind of work that you do. All right. So uh, it started out, my, my dad uh, actually came from Germany to Cuba. And in Cuba, he was an amateur photographer. All he really had with him was a, a, a Leica camera. And he took photographs of uh, immigrants on the beach in, uh, in, in Cuba. And at night, he would go back to his apartment that he had there uh, and uh, develop the pictures, bring them back the next day and sell it to people on the beach. And people loved his work. He was he, he happened to be a, a, an amazing portrait photographer. Um, he uh, made friends with another uh, immigrant who was a um, uh, photographer as well, and uh, he did he did very the two of them did very well. Um, a friend moved to Boston and opened a successful photography business. And my dad moved to New York. Uh, wasn't married. Uh, he was I think thirty four or so when he got to New York. And uh, the people from uh, Cuba that he, you know, was selling these pictures to moved to New York as well. All the immigrants came here and uh, uh, they remembered him. And he moved to the area where they were living and which was the Upper West Side at the time, not the best area at that time, but uh, that's where they were living. And uh, little by little, they came back to him for family pictures. And then these kids grew up and uh, he did their bar mitzvahs and he did uh, birthday parties for them. And then a few years later, the wedding started to come in. And uh, little by little, he built this business. He worked really, really hard. Um, he used to work every night from, uh, from home. I used to listen to him every night. My room was ex- like five feet from where he was making phone calls to try to get business. And, uh, I kind of got my knowledge uh, through osmosis, through the wall of, uh, our apartment. And we built up the. Uh, and what you know, was it? What was it like seventy five years ago? Uh, what were the events like? Was it any different than it is today? Oh my God! It, it, it's totally different. I mean, first of all, they weren't anywhere near as elaborate as what we're doing today, which is partially another story because kind of where we moved our business. But uh, uh, they they were still big events, m- many hundreds of people sometimes at an event. What was different was the way we photographed. In other words, uh, you know, today I see, uh, you know, I mean, let's go back. Originally, when 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 I was working with my dad, uh, we were shooting black and white. I shouldn't, you know, that's my age, but whatever. But we were only shooting black and white on what four by five film on a very large camera format. Um, and at a big wedding, we might shoot 
80 photographs, 80. Today I see young photographers shooting 80 photographs of the bride's shoes. So it's like a whole different world that we're in. It's, it's, it's kind of like a little bit shocking. Um, Today we shoot thousands of photographs at a wedding, uh, you know, to get the ones that we want. Where in those days it was much more uh, selective, and uh, I grew up with that, which was really good for me. And in my training, I learned um, how to take the right picture. It's not, you know, my my dad used to. Um, and that, make an analogy of going to war. You know, you want to make every bullet count, every photograph count. And he used to tell me, you know, every time we push the button on the camera, it costs this much to develop the film and buy the film and 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 make a, a, a print of that. So I, that's the way I grew up. And I started working with my dad when I was uh, like 13 years old, 14 years old, as his assistant. And so what, what was the, what was, you, I was very interesting that you said each time you push the trigger, you're, you're literally pushing the trigger. Right. You have to make sure it works. Right. What? How was the setup on the other end? What? Did, how did you create a, a photograph then? Was it the eye, or did he actually physically go into the into the group and pose people? And no, no. People we, we we uh, one of my father's uh, biggest uh, that studio's biggest qualities were that we did beautiful portraits, and and that's what people were looking for, not snapshots, which is kind of what goes on today for most photographers, and not everybody, but a, a large percentage do basically snapshots. And what we did were actually beautiful portraits. They were lit beautifully. Uh, this was before the time when I started. We used flash bulbs. Nobody remembers what, I mean, you and I probably remember, yes. but that's about it. Everybody else, like, what's a flash bulb? And um, it was crazy. So you took a photograph, you had to switch, you know, put a new flash bulb in the camera. So everything had to be very carefully set up and, and you were taking one, maybe two images. Um, it's completely different. And then, it, you know, everything advanced to uh, electronic flash and, you know, faster cameras, faster, you know, film and then, you know, now digital. So, But what were the formats at an event? Like, what would you be shooting? You'd be shooting... Uh, the tables and the people. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, mean it was the, the same. Does, that has not changed, for, right? No, that hasn't changed. The weddings are weddings. You know, people say my wedding is going to be different. I have brides coming in every day. You know, my wedding is going to be different. Uh, let me know. Are you having a ceremony? Yes. Are you having a dinner? Yes. Are you having dancing? Yes. Are you having a cake? Of course. So the format of the wedding is hasn't changed at all. I mean, it doesn't really matter, uh, you know, whether it's a, 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 a Catholic wedding, a Greek wedding, a Jewish wedding, it, it makes no difference. The formats are all the same. Uh, there are certain images that you, you must capture and you, and those are the, you know, the most important ones. Um, you know, in the end, uh, you can take a million pictures, but it doesn't really make a difference. You need to know what people want and what they're looking for. You know, I, I've always done that. I, I have a very good sense of, um, what people need. Has and, that changed over? I mean, you've watched this over 75 years. I'm not totally. Right. You know, actually you have. No, no, me, watched, I've watched uh, probably 50 years. 50 yeah, years, yeah. 50 years. But you sort of understand the DNA of the, yeah. the entire um, scope of this thing. Totally. Do, do what people want change? Um, or is it just that the, me is it the memories or is it? it no, the, well, to me, the, the, the big thing is my biggest joy is when I have people now, their, their grandparents come in and tell me, you know, your dad, uh, photographed my wedding, you know, 60 years ago. And it, it, it's, you know, and then the most important pictures to me and, and I, we relive, you know, relive the day and we, we look at them all the time. So that's really a, for me, the joy I get from, from, you know, doing this. Um, if you do a great job, people remember you and they come back to you. We have a, a amazingly loyal clientele is kind of how we built this business up to where it is today. So, okay. So tell us, where are you today? Cause we're going to do the contrasting okay. between the past and, the, and the, sure. uh, the present and the future. Okay. But where are, where are you today in terms of what you do versus what okay. you have so, done? So like I had mentioned before, the, the, uh, uh, business started out as more of a portrait studio, did small weddings and such and built it up little by little. Um, I came into the business and it was very interesting. <laughs> we just a little aside. When I came in, I was photographing just to get practice i was photographing models i used to work for wilhelmina model agency wilhelmina was a very good friend oh, yeah. of mine uh, ford model agency they used to send me models to take photographs uh, test shots and for me that was you know fabulous i'm working with gorgeous women and you know practicing my lighting and posing and you know things i would you know to make my work better so it was great and i once said to my dad i said you know um 
why are we photographing weddings? And we're going, we're working till two or three in the morning and we're killing ourselves. I said, I have these beautiful women coming in. Why don't we do something with that? That would be great. And true story, he took me into uh, his office. And at that time, uh, no computer. I mean, it was nothing. We, uh, he pulled out the yellow pages and, you know, which was like a six inch thick volume. And he said, uh, he asked me, he said, turn to a commercial photographer. So I go to commercial photographers in the New York yellow pages. And I think there were probably 10 or 15 pages in tiny, tiny print of photographers. I said, okay. And then he said, go to uh, wedding photographers. So I look up wedding photographers and their four names. Okay, four names. And he said to me, would you like to be competition for this 12 pages of guys? Or would you like to be competition for these other three people? In the, in, in the, and that made so much sense to me. So ever since then, um, I've been doing weddings and I, I, I love, I actually love doing them. Uh, we've built the business little by little by, um, uh, giving people better work and our reputation increased where we uh, started to doing very niche weddings. We started to doing big weddings of important people. Um, I think the first wedding I did that was really uh, of note was the head of um, uh, MGM, which was at that time Marvin Davis. Oh, yeah. He owned the oil company and big guy and always work uh, came to our studio with his security guy who came with a, uh, uh, a suitcase with a briefcase and I always said to him you know I said what's in the you know there was a very nice guy this year I said what's in the briefcase and he opened up was like an Uzi machine gun <laughs> so to protect <laughs> Marvin Davis and we had a great we we just hit it off we had a great rapport and uh, we booked the the uh, uh, wedding photography for his daughter and it was at the Pierre Hotel I'll never forget it was a huge wedding. Everybody on that guest list was somebody important. And for us, it was an amazing break. And then we were uh, doing, at that time, uh, uh, video. We just started doing video. And he, he said, no, I have, uh, my my friend uh, is the president of ABC. And he he's going to do the video for us. And I looked at him and I said, you want guys with blue ABC TV jackets coming into the wedding? Doing, you know, he goes, Oh, you have a really good point. And he gave us the, the video to do. And the video was like crazy. We just did such a great job. He, he, lo- we did it as if it were a movie with the MGM lion roaring. And then at the end, we did, uh, the credits where there was a guest list of all the guests at the wedding. Area. And I mean, the, the party came out great. He loved it. And that was our first break. They recommended a bunch of people to us. And that's how it really started. And with us, it's all recommendation. I mean, really, I would tell you 85% of what I do is, is strictly people. One happy you know, recommends and, and another. Do you, do you, you get know, the lifetime of their, of the business from the corporate to the, uh, to the social, to the yeah, other I, thing? I get, I get, um, mostly the social. I'm not as big corporate. We do a lot of corporate parties, but not as much. Mm. Um, I find, uh, I have a much better, uh, you know, uh, sales, ability with 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 uh, personal photographs is cor- is corporate is social much more lucrative today i for us for sure yeah. i mean the, for us it's all about you know if you do a good job people order a lot of photographs after the event uh, unfortunately today most photographers don't see it that way a lot of photographers just go to take the photographs and then give a like a disc of the images that are unretouched unfinished uncropped not so, been color corrected, and so you're I'm, you're I'm full service. The big one, and is that what people you think that that's sort of what people appreciate at the end at the end of the day? The the for the, my the, customers, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. We go all over the world. Uh, my son just was in uh, last week was in uh, Paris photographing a, a wedding for four hundred people. So it's it's uh, we're we're traveling all over the world with this. I've done weddings in Tokyo and Italy and uh, I mean, uh, you, you name it, Israel and uh, Mexico, well, I to- all over. I mean, we just do a lot of traveling and, for and this business. Are, are people, uh, when they do these destination events, are they hiring you because they know you from New York and they're going into other markets or you're, what is sort of the yeah, they, nature of it? They know, uh, I mean, we're, you know, I mean, our website, I think is exceptionally good mm-hmm. uh, compared to most wedding uh, photographers websites. And I think that people uh, hear about us and it's again, word of mouth and uh, we're not certainly not the least expensive, but we give people a lot of value for what they, they spend. So, so how do you compete? I mean, we're now in this sort of hipster world 
I mean, you're not necessarily the most hipster guy in your your your, oh, your agency. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> but how do you compete in that world? What is your sort of what is what's the what do you what do you see, and how do you think about all well, this? That's why my son is doing so well. You know, but he's, he's Mr. Hipster. Mr. Hipster. No, he's he's terrific, and and it's I think it's all about uh, relationships with people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about listening to what they want and and giving it to them. Is it the relationship with the bride and groom or the relationship with the event planner? Or the no, party, no party I, I, to me, it's the relationship between the, the bride and groom, the parents, uh, are very important because still today, I think many of the parents are paying for these weddings. Um, and, the, and of course, the party planners that on occasion bring us the work. Um, I'm in a little different position at this point because most of the work that party planners do bring us, um, uh, or wedding uh, planners or event planners, you mean? Those, uh, yeah, event planners yeah, yeah. Uh, are, uh, are, are customers who I've had already as, as customers. So, um, you know, it, it's interesting how they, you know, planners tend to work. So they find out all this information, then they kind of, you know, give you the same, you know, people back at you. What, say, say that again? So in other words, okay. uh, you know... Like I, hear some, I hear some sort of something angst coming out of this. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I, you know, I mean, I have a lot of planners that call up and say, uh, you know, I have uh, Mrs. Jones. She has a... a wedding. Oh, uh, you know, no, yeah, we photographed her daughter's wedding, you know, five years ago, and oh, that's so nice that she'd like to use us again. But they make it sound like they, they came up with that idea. We work with a few party planners. It's it, They're great. I like to work with planners because they do make our life on occasion... Um, much easier because uh, they handle a lot of the detail stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it's all good. But it, for most people, planners are, uh, you know, it, everybody has, you know, every planner has their own uh, people, so to speak. Right. So part of their team. So are you're like part of the team of, of, of several of yes. these planners, that yes, I assume. Totally. And, uh, and how does that normally work? Is it... Um, is it, 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 they take care of, like they're paying you directly or is the, yeah, yeah, well, how does you know, it, it, give it, us it, some it, of these sausage it, making. Okay. I mean, there are different ways the planners handle things. Uh, you know, some people uh, give us the party. We handle everything, which is my pref, you know, preferred way. Cause then I can really focus in on what people want. Uh, kind of when it gets filtered through a planner, you can have a lot of mistakes and you can have a lot of things missed um, just because they're so busy and, they don't think it's important. You know, they forget to tell you about a family member or somebody who came from out of town. Okay, things so like that. is that bitch one? Is that, 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 well, that's a little bit of a bitch one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, okay. What's, what's a bitch two? <laughs> You're terrible. Uh, no, I, you know, so, so basically that is, um, you know, where we prefer to deal with the, you know, and then there are planners who, who, you know, don't want to have any contact with the client. And, um, which is fine, but then, you know, when there's something missed or so, it becomes your issue, you know. Right. I prefer, I prefer things from, uh, you know, straight from the, uh, straight from the horse's mouth. And what, the communications, whether it's corporate or whether yeah. it's, it's wedding or whatever, what is the best way for someone to communicate their needs and desires well, at an event? Do you have okay. a process around yeah, that? Yeah, we do. Well, so, so once we have a party book, we, we have a, um, uh, set of information, I call it homework, that we give to the clients to fill out. Um, usually people book us six months, a year before, so I have plenty of time to do this, which is a list of all the uh, information I need to make sure my job is done correctly at the wedding. Uh, you know, I want to make sure nothing's missed. Uh, again, going through second party, third party, whatever, you, you wind up having this uh, uh, kind of messed up. So I, I prefer to deal with it, take the responsibility for it. We try to make every family's experience very, very uh, simple. It should be no stress, just perfect. Now, that goes from the beginning to the end. Uh, in other words, from the photographing of the wedding to the finishing of the albums, the retouching we do, the, the way we present the product. So it should be stress-free all the way through. And do you do combine with digital and with um, print in terms of the way you deliver your end product? Oh, my, my end product is, is print. My end product is a beautiful leather bound album that is handmade um, and um, and many times in multiple volumes. I'm working on a party right now uh, where we're doing the, we did the photography, but uh, they picked over 700 photographs for their album, which is uh, 
crazy. It's going to be in like five volumes. And, and that's the kind of thing when people, uh, you know, spend large amounts of money on an event to me, you know, to figure in 10% for photography is not a crazy ask. Is that I, the rule? Is that kind of a, rule. a rule? That's no, your no, rule? That's my rule. <laughs> So it's, and, it's, it's some other photographers, I think, also would probably say the same thing. However, if you give the, for the photographers who are giving their clients a disc of just images and say, hey, go to Shutterfly or go somewhere, I mean, what does that do for you? It, you you're, giving a, you're giving them something that they have no idea what to do with, that photographs have blemishes and lines. And, you know, I, I make okay, people so look good. this is bitch three. That's well. That well. That's bitch. It, it's not mine. It's it's you know everybody. Is it's every you know. So people you know want to look great in their photographs, and we offer that service. It's an in-house. I have my, you know in our studio we have retouchers, album designers. Most photographers farm this out to outside uh, places. So they send the retouching to India. They send the album to uh, Australia, and it takes you know, ages to get back. And if there's an issue, you can't fix it. So we have everything in our studio and it's done one, two, three. If somebody wants to make a change, I do it on the spot. And I think people really appreciate that. We, we work with them. There is a ton of, of personalized customer service that they don't get from other studios. We're going to take a little break and come right back after this message from Hilton. So when's the big event? Hilton's here for planners with their exclusive customized meetings. Become a wow maker and save time by letting Hilton help you present an extraordinary event, one that leads to memorable and meaningful connections. Visit meetings.hilton.com and let Hilton help you. We, we had some discussion at a, one of the parties recently about the difference between the new photographers that are coming up and what you guys do. And you had some opinions on that. Yeah. What, I mean, I what, what do you think is like, you're seeing these young guys, these young people coming up. Mm -hmm. They, what do they not know about what they should be doing? A lot. I think, well, I love, first of all, a lot of them don't want to deal with people. I find that p photographers that work for studios that work with a studio, um, are not good with dealing with the business end of this. They they like to be creative. They want to be the artist. They're a little bit maybe a prima donna type person, and they want to just deal with taking pictures. They take the pictures, give me a check, I'm out of your hair. And I'm the opposite. I love taking the pictures, but I enjoy the whole process of talking to people and and making beautiful albums and telling a story. Because when we photograph, it's a story. It's not a bunch of snapshots. They, most photographers are taking snapshots. It's going around. They have no idea what they're taking or who they're taking pictures of. After the event, the people look at them and they go like, oh, where's my sister? Where's my brother? You know, I'm talking aunts and uncles. They have no clue. And what we do is by getting all this information, we set it up before we are taking beautiful family pictures, get that all done before the guests even arrive. And then we're available to just take fun shots of the party. Um, we put it together in such a way that people are really, I think, thankful for that. Other photographers just don't do that. Uh, and it's between you and me, I, it's a, for them, it's a huge economic loss. I mean, I, I just, you know, I love dealing with a, a, an album. A wedding album is a story. It has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. It should, it should be that. Do you, do you think on the corporate side, there should be that same type of thing too, that in an event, I mean, an event has got a purpose. I mean, how do you use those photographs to engage people more? Okay, but corporate is different because most corporate uh, uh, events don't make albums. Right. Most corporate events, uh, I'm just working on something. I'm saying, should they? Should they be, should there be a way of, 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 of merchandising that event back to the people yeah, it would that be attended? a great idea because, you know, each company has a history and that's how you record that history in 20 years. You know, say, oh, let me go back, you know, and, and, and you can, you would have an album to look back on what the, what this event was and, and, and have a record of the event. Having it in digital form in, in 10 years from now, they wouldn't even, not even 10 years, I'll go five years from now, Whatever form you have, your little thumb drives, that won't exist. Uh, DVDs are done. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it was VHS, then it went to DVD, VHS. Who uses a VHS recorder anymore? So now DVDs, nobody's, computers don't come with DVD players anymore. You can get one and plug it in, but nobody does that. So now, you know, it, it changes so rapidly. Even the connections from a hard drive to a computer is changing every few years. This is a, like a big issue. I mean, we're backed up in, 
15 different ways, but it's still an issue. And it's certainly an issue for the end consumer because, you know, what do they have? So for a, corp- a corporation, I would think that, that it would be a great idea to do. I'm just doing a, a very big industrialist. He's uh, one of probably one of the richest people here in the city. And we're doing a thing. He's going to be 85 years old. And um, next week, actually, we're interviewing Everybody who works for him, putting a video together of the family and they, of the uh, of the company, and using photographs that the company uh, uh, employees have taken, and putting this all together and giving it to him for his 85th birthday. It's a big project, and, but you know the the head of the company who we're doing, you know, he doesn't know about it. It's a surprise to him. His, his we won't uh, tell. His I appreciate. I want to mention <laughs> that his assistant called me about this, and um, but this is a guy who is what I call one of my ideal customers. I have a handful, maybe two handfuls of people who um, we just take photographs for and give them an album. I am the one making the final decision of what is in that book. And it's not about dollars. It's about telling a great story. I photograph his family probably once a year, you know, once every couple of years, we do every event in their family. And it is amazing how he just trusts us. It's, it's crazy. Uh, he gave me a, you know, he gave me, he gives me projects to do, which I do when it's it just, just do it and, and send me a bill and it's paid. Um, that's an ideal customer. I have uh, this one where we're doing the 700 pictures for his party. I have, he actually did three parties, never ordered the pictures. I saw him on Madison Avenue. So help me last week. I saw him on uh, Sunday on Madison Avenue. He said, call me. I called him on Tuesday and I hear the phones ringing funny and, I said, and he answers. I said, where are you? He says, I'm in Qatar. I said, you're crazy. I said, where, you know, I just saw you. He says, yeah, I'm doing some business here. Well, I said, when are you going to be back? He says, Friday. I said, I'm going to have your album ready to look at on Friday. He said, I'll be here on Monday. So uh, this is a guy, again, he said, do it. I'll pay for it. Just make it happen. And that's the kind, but this is a guy who had, uh, uh, at one of his kids' bar mitzvahs, uh, Justin Bieber. At another one, he had Drake. This is the entertainment. This is the level of entertainment. Right, right. So, you know, what the album costs is well, nothing. 10% of that cost. There you go. I'll take 10% of what he paid Justin Bieber for 20 minutes. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, you have to have that where, you know, where you understand when you have a very high end client that maybe you and I couldn't afford it, but. You know, for them, it's nothing. They they want this. I mean, this is what they spend hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars on these events. And is that the moment? I mean, you know, you read about these people that are their their houses are burned down, and the one thing they pull out that Always. they get is the album, yeah, the photographs, yeah. they, and that's the most important thing to people. That, that's a terrific point because that's really what you know. Um, I think is you know. Well, I mean, I think it's it's. Amazing how people do that. Even with digital, they go for the print albums. Correct. Well, that's the other problem. So people keeping things on, on hard drives and so on, and there, God forbid, there's something. That's all gone. And it, it's, you know. Well, the cloud you have, though. Well, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully this all works. You know, it's uh, it's it's not the way Except to do it. the electricity goes yeah, out. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, that's not the way to do it, but it, it's, you know, it, it, it's just bizarre how people think. But, you know, as far as a photographer, most photographers don't... Um, deal with the album. They don't want to deal with the people. They don't want to put the albums together. It's a lot of work, but um, if you have the right people doing it, you know, it goes very smoothly, I find. So let's move a little bit over to, like we talked a little bit earlier about the client, the customer. Mm-hmm. You know when it's going to be a disaster or you know when it's going to be a success. Like what are the telltale signs of the bad customer that people, the cautionary tale that you want to tell other photographers and other vendors in our business to stay away? Are there okay. any personality I, traits? Yeah, well, I think if you, you know, as soon as you start getting too many emails or too many phone calls, it's probably time to run. You're terrible. <laughs> you said it's going to be a tell-all. No, uh, <laughs> you know. So okay. So if you get a customer who's who calls you up about every little thing and is really annoying, you know you're going to have a problem after the wedding because they're going to find something and they're going to you know. So you have to know how to deal with the people with this. Um, how do you deal with it? 
how do you deal do, with do, it? Do, 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 you, do you tiptoe through it? But you do can, you tiptoe through, or are you aggressive right from the beginning that that you take command? Or it's do you, interesting. My my dad always took command. Um, you know, it's like uh, I, I tell the story of a, a woman who came to my dad um, and, and and you know a tough customer. She came in after the wedding. This is the mother of the bride, and she said to to my father, Mr. And I was sitting in the office. So I is it Mr. Marcus? You didn't do me justice here. And he looked at her and he said, Mrs. Greenberg, you don't want justice. You want mercy. <laughs> and that's basically what happened. So it, it's like he's tough. He, he used to put it, he used to put his foot down. Um, I'm a little less that way, but I, I don't give in. I, I understand sometimes people want to, it's a way of negotiating and saying, you know, this is wrong and that's wrong. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I, I always tell my customers, it's like buying a brand new car. If you really want to go over the, the car with a fine tooth, I'm sure you'll find a little ding and a little dent somewhere. I don't care about that personally in my life. Cause I know in two weeks, there's going to be 20 more little dings and dents. Some people go crazy. So uh, you have to be able to deal with it and make them happy um, in the end. And that, and that's what I do. If, I mean, it's, uh, you know, so where's the power in the client on the client side? Is it the, the father of the bride, the mother of the bride, in the wedding side. Is it the kid? Is it the is it the brother that sort of jealousy is well, not the, the, there? The power, the power is basically. I mean, is where is the person who's paying for it? Because in the you know ultimately that's what it is. The daughter may want hundred and fifty pictures in her album, and the father only wants to pay for fifty. So there is now the uh, issue of of. You know, my calling up and saying, listen, this won't work. It's not a good story. I don't, you know, I don't want you to necessarily spend more money, but you have, you know, just to make, and he had such a beautiful wedding. And um, when I show them what we do, they all say yes. What do you do with the dissatisfied customer that says, I mean, I'm sure you don't have that many of them because of your quality of your work, but you know when there's a guy that's trying to like screw you, basically. Oh, <laughs> like, just, how do you I judge that? How do you judge those people? Something like that going on right now. I'm not sure the end result of it, but I'll tell you the story. So we, we okay. did a wedding and the, the father of the bride called up. We wanted to post a picture, I think, on our Instagram of the wedding. It was a gorgeous wedding. And he called up, absolutely, I'll sue you, I'll do it. If you put a picture, I said, it's not a problem. That's why we ask. I, everybody, I respect everybody's privacy. So, I, you know, it's just such a beautiful picture. You really don't, you know, we don't mention your name. I just wanted to put it up. It was good. No, absolutely. And he went, you know, off on me. So I said, no problem. And just the other day, we get a call from the bride saying that a magazine wants to do an article about her wedding. So I have a big note on my, you know, on our database. I mean, I have like, you know, flashing letters that are, you know, do not use any social media for any reason. So I'm like, no, I can't give you photographs from your wedding because your father doesn't, you know, was explicit. He would absolutely not want this done. So uh, that's where I'm, I'm right now. So now I'm going to have the, when I have the reverse end here. So he's going to call me probably and say, no, no, that's okay. And I'm going like, well, it wasn't an okay, you know, a couple months ago. I don't want to start trouble with anybody. I want everybody to be happy, but there is this, I think it's sometimes a way people try to get the files from us and they make their own photographs. Um, by giving someone the option to do that, you're giving, it doesn't make you look good because you're giving them photographs that aren't retouched, finished, uh, enhanced. They just are snapshots. I mean, they need to be cropped and color corrected and brightened. And, you know, we take out blemishes and soften, you know, there's, uh, in the summer you have shine on your forehead. I take all that out. Um, when I give, you know, if you give somebody files, that's not done. I see what other studios, I have a small business literally of, I probably do 15 albums, 20 albums a year from from customers who come to me and call me up, you know, my, my daughter got married and the photographer gave me a disc and I saw my friend's album. You did it so beautiful. Can you make me photo, make me an album? I said, absolutely come in. And I sit there and I look at what other people are doing. First of all, photographically, which I get, you know, it's quite interesting. And then um, I put a book together for them. And then they realize they're spending thousands of dollars on this book. For, uh, they have to pay for the retouching and the finishing and the editing of the images and whatever else I do and the design. And I go like, she said, why not hire you in the first place? I said, well, that's a good question. So next time you'll remember and you'll come. And that's what happens. I build up a, another business. It's, it's such, it's ridiculous that people go to photographer A, B, or C and they don't want to make the album. And then they come to me and 
from their work, I'm making a book and making ten, fifteen thousand. But is it the is it the um the photo the retouching and the and, I mean is that what people aren't doing anymore? You Nobody's get, doing that. No, but you you get these programs online that allows you to retouch, but it's kind of yeah. No, crap, no, we, right? we, we I'm using we don't use that. We do everything. It's really hand retouched. I I make people look better. I I can slim. I can take out. You can, how do you slim? Oh, it's <laughs> Photoshop. 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 It's old fashioned photo. Is it old, old fashioned photo? Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. No, we slim. We, uh, you know, I mean, I have people who are literally, you know, seriously overweight and they say, no, 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 I don't look like, that. you know, make me slimmer. And we can do it. And they love it. You know, I mean, it is. We take out lines. We take out wrinkles. We take, you know, this is what we do. It's cheaper than the face love. It, it is 100%, you know, and we don't <laughs> even take Blue Cross or anything, you know. It's like, it's, um, it, it, people come to us for that. And, and, and it's our service. And they know they're getting that. And no matter, uh, a, a very big reason why I wouldn't like to give files to clients. So is there a difference? Is there a difference? How are the generational differences between the people that 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 want photography? Do do younger people that are in this new Gen Z Gen yeah. Gen, Gen uh, Millennial generation yeah. do they care as much or they care more about their about this than than the boomers? Let's say I don't think they care as much. They still do make albums, though. I don't have anybody. You know, I have people who haven't come in uh, in years. To make their album, I had some, I, this is a true story. I had uh, a woman walked in, uh, this is about maybe a year ago. She walks in my office and I look at her and I know, I, I'm, I'm terrible with names, but I know the face and I go, I said, can I help you? She says, yes, you did my son's book. I said, I know, what, what's your name? And I added, and she tells me her name and I go, oh my God, that was like for, you know, a long time ago. Yes, I, I never made the album. I said, really? She said, I want to make the album for his 35th birthday. I go, it was 22 years ago. I said, Larry, you know, and we have an amazing file system. Now we're talking negatives. This is obviously 22 years ago. And I found it in five, she was so impressed. I found the negatives and she says, you know, I paid for this, uh, you know, uh, it was the album was paid for. I go, you know, it's a funny story about that. I, I, I went to the BMW store, you know, the showroom. And I said, I wanted to buy a BMW. And I said, 22 years ago, the price was only $3,000 for the BMW. I, I, you're going to have to pay the difference. And it was a huge difference. I mean, considering it's crazy. You know, people come in thinking that, you know, that everything costs the same as it did then. Okay. There you go. So, I mean, it's Let's like, go into pricing. Okay. Can we, you want to, would you what, let, let us know what things cost today based on certain criteria? Like what should be the rule of thumb today? Uh, in terms of how much should a wedding photography photographer cost in terms of the different aspects okay. of it. So wedding photography, yeah. I th- it, it's kind of unfair to give a price. A yes. in the, well, however the you want to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, so I would tell you, uh, you know, obviously in New York or probably uh, not even Los Angeles, oh, I think New York is very unique. All right. And, and the numbers are ridiculous when you go to a, a wedding and we've done many weddings in LA and, and, and you, you, uh, you hear the pricing and even the pricing for food in LA, you go to a, you know, hotel, what they charge. I mean, here you can pay $800,000 a person. That's not crazy on a, you know, no holds barred wedding. Right. So people, that's a lot of money. And when you go to LA, they, you know, like a hundred dollars is a lot of money. So it's, it's a, it's a big, um, there's a big discrepancy here. So photographers who work in, you know, in the mid, you know, in, in the middle of the country are going to, you know, have obviously it'll be less. Um, but, uh, you're dealing with, um, a very wealthy clientele here. And whether it be corporate or, you know, the corporate business sort of fell off. The corporate business is more on a day rate basis. Correct. Right? And it's, and they just want a bunch of pictures and, yeah, and, and it's, it's like, here, it's you know, not as, the, the margins aren't big. Exactly. So you have to do a ton of it to, you know, make right. any money. Right. Uh, so, you know, I find, uh, you know, I, I'd say, you know, photography ranges anywhere probably for in, in Manhattan from f- four or $5,000, you know, on up. Just for and, the day of or for oh, the yeah, album? Of. No, it includes, it includes an album with a finite number of pictures. Okay. Now, you know, I do a wedding with 400 people. I have a party. This, I have a party this weekend at a, in a museum here, at a, actually a small, they have 600 people coming. It's a, uh, you know, it, it's a, that person needs a lot more coverage, a lot more people. I need more staff coming to do that wedding than if they, you know, it would engage in party for 50 people in a little, you know, in a restaurant. So, um, 
Pricing really depends on. So what? So when you say photography, is that just photography or photography and video? No, no, and just album? photography. Just so photography. what would a video piece cost? Uh, video is probably in the you know seven to eight thousand dollar range, and again depends on staffing. Um, you know, I, less I don't really do because we we actually do our videos with multiple cameras and and put a and lot. And what into it. what is the deliverable of a video? Uh, I can do it any which way. Normally now we're doing it on a thumb drive. No, I mean in terms of time and like what's the oh. story picture, story like? Is it a three-minute piece or is it a 50-minute oh, piece? Oh, oh, or is oh, it oh, a- that's a, actually, <clears throat> that's a great question because um, I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you what, I'll answer your question, then I'll tell you the story. The, the uh, uh, deliverable here is we give two. We give that three-minute, four-minute video, which is what everybody watches, and it's, it's a... Um, not a trailer, but a, a seriously put together four minute video that tells the story of the entire day. And it's beautifully done. Music is what clients want. They, they pick the music and such, um, with our advice, but they, they, they do it. And then we give them the full video. I call it the grandma video. She wants to see the whole ceremony. She wants to see all the stuff that kids are not even interested. I, very rarely do I have people say, I watch the whole video. I watch the four minute piece, which brings me to the opposite of this. We just did a, a wedding in July in um, Wyoming at the, uh, 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 in a big ranch, a 33,000 acre ranch in Wyoming. And it was a beautiful wedding, probably had about 200 people. And we did not do the video. Somebody else did the video. And it was a fabulous wedding, went on for four days, all these different events going on. It was terrific. The wedding album that we put together here is over 800 pictures. I mean, this is the kind of thing where you're telling a story. And it, it's it, it's worthy of a magazine. As a matter of fact, I think Grace Orman just used uh, did it on their website. You can even see the pictures. Um, it's <sighs> The video, I said, I, I, I want to see the video when you get it. I know the couple. So they, they sent me the video. The video was three minutes long. And I know what they spent for the video. It's five figures, higher five figures. So I go, where's the rest of the video? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you had so many. You had, and I, I started to remind him of the wonderful things that happened at the wedding. This and that. And that you know. she, he had one thing where the, where the groom, all his groomsmen were talking about the I've never seen it. And people were crying and the parents were crying and they're talking. About it. it was so emotional. I said, I'm, oh, I'm, and they were videoing the whole thing. Not even on the video. Nothing. Zero. I mean, to me, this is what you have a video for. You don't need photos. You have the, you know, you, it, it, it's about the emotion and it's about the sound. Missed the whole thing. So I said to him, I said, what, you really paid for this? I said, that's not right. I said, you should be having a video of your five days that tell a story. Now, it doesn't have to be a, 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 a you know, major motion picture, but your video should be, you know, half an hour, a short video should be at least half an hour, 40 minutes, because you had five days of, or five days of, uh, of stuff. Totally missed the boat, the videographers. It, video was nice. I mean, quality was nice. It was all outdoors. You can't go too wrong, uh, you know, photographing outdoors. Uh, but uh, anyway, so it, 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 it's something I would never give to a customer on a, on a four-day event. Right. You know, that, that's what happens right. here. It's, but the thing is, what, what we're seeing is you're seeing these celebrity photographers and these celebrity, I mean, is that a bitch? I I'm see a your, celebrity photographer. If you photograph and say, look, we did Ivanka Trump's wedding. We do, we do some big weddings. I mean, we do, uh, you know, I mean, I started Mary Tyler Moore and, uh, uh, oh God, I mean, you name it. Uh, my son photographed LeBron James' wedding in California. So, I mean, we do a lot. I, I hate that when it's like, cele- everybody's a celebrity something, you know, celebrity plumber. So you watch right, television, right, yeah. you know, it's like, um, the, the idea is that you do good work and that I've seen, you know, celebrity wedding photography that is god awful. Right. And they, they can get a, like, get a lot of money, but they can't do it for long, it sounds like. Or do, or do they create careers that are, are, uh, no, I don't think you, you create careers like that. I think, you know, and that, I, I don't like that word. I think you have to, if you do good work, There's I a think bitch. the celebrity coming. Okay. Yeah, no, There's when you bitch. do good work, people come to you and they flock to you. Right. When you, it's not good, it, it gets around twice as fast. You know, it's just, but uh, can you, but can you, you can't exploit it though. Like a lot of people that are spending gazillions of, like what you talked about yes. in this wedding in Wyoming, right. where all of a sudden they're trying to get hundreds of thousands of dollars for three minutes. Uh, well, I crazy. mean, well, well, this, you know, I won't call him a celebrity uh, videographer in this case, um, but he was, uh, the work was good. I, I, nothing bad yeah, with the work. I thought the work was good. It's just, he missed. 
the, the, the emotion of the day. I was right. there. I mean, I saw this. And he just missed the boat on is the that, whole thing. Is that because I mean, when you do these personal events, you have there is a feel for it. There is something that you need. Oh, no, there's no question. You there's can't a feel. just go. But and, it's also laziness because the more the more you leave out, the less you have. You know, obviously, you don't have to edit it. You don't have to right. spend the time. So, uh, you know, give them a three-minute video there. You know, they're happy. They thought, right. they thought they, uh, until I said to them, but what happened here? And where's that? Right. And where's this? What about, let's move a little bit onto social media in terms sure. of this. Do you, um, you see everyone else shooting it? Like you now go to a wedding yeah. or go to any event and everybody's holding up their own cameras. Notice that? And, and, <laughs> and that has changed everything. Yes. So how, do, how does the professional photographer sort of navigate around that? Um, I, in a nice way, uh, when I'm doing my family photographs and, and working with a bride, um, try to dissuade people, family around me from taking photographs. And the reason for that is very, very simple, is that people don't know where to look. The idea is that you look at, you know, at the camera. When you're doing a group photograph of, uh, you know, 8, 10, 12 people, you don't want people looking right, left, you know, up, down. And here you have all these other photographers, you know, other people holding phones, taking photographs. And it becomes distracting. So now during the wedding itself, personally, I think it's the ugliest thing in the world. When you have a bride walking down an aisle and there's 30 people holding up a phone in front of their face, not looking at the bride and watching. I take pictures of it sometimes. And I think it's funny because it's, it's just weird. You know, that when you, they're not in the moment, they kind of miss the boat on this whole thing. It's, 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 it's just strange. Um, so I, during the party, I don't care. I really don't. But for the family pictures, it, it is totally distracting. And what about what's going on now, though, with social media and these big celebrity, these big fancy weddings like that? That are they allowing social media at the weddings? People to have their cameras. People are collecting cameras. cameras yeah, like they that. lock them up. Actually, we, uh, yeah, we, You're you know, but people get around. We did Eddie Murphy's wedding, for example, and I'll never forget the, the uh, at that time. I don't even know if it's is the star still around the newspaper, the red, you know. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I, they said. This is a true story. They sent me a check, a blank check, and they said, "Put any, made out to me, put any amount you want on that check, and we want the photographs from the from the ceremony." And I'm going like, "You got to be," and then the guys go, you, "You put any amount you want. I don't care." And it was like ridiculous. I mean, it was it's tempting. I mean, for some young kid, it probably was tempting. I said, "I can't do that." I said, "This is what we do." And if I do it for you, you know, I'm done. So we didn't do it. And would you believe that there was a guy in the middle of the ceremony that jumps up and with two cameras, and I would still remember what they were, little Olympus tiny camera. This is in film days, taking photographs and full page in the, in the, using our lighting that we set up in the room. It was bizarre. And, and, and I went up to him afterwards. I said, what was that all about? He's, he says, I, I said, how did you get in? Cause I knew this was not a guest. He shows me, he pulls out a badge. He had, he had a fake badge and he got it through the security. And there he is in the middle of the ceremony getting all the photos. And that's happening today too? The same type of thing? Are you saying? Oh, I think, I mean, you see that all over the place. Okay. I mean, so you did sort of hint that you did Ivanka and Jared's wedding. Yes. And I did Jared's bar mitzvah too. <laughs> oh, tell us about Jared's bar mitzvah. No, we did that. We did both family. What you know, was Jared's uh, bar mitzvah like? No, I, uh, I don't remember Jared's bar mitzvah exactly. The whole we family. Did it. We was did there. It. I did the whole family. The the the, the, the Jared's family has uh, been great customers yes. of ours for many years. I've done yes. all the children's thing. And and uh, Donald Trump, I have worked for for 30 years, easy. I was on his, I used to be like best friends with the captain of his, uh, you know, ship. He used to have the princess yeah. yacht. And I used to be on that two, three times a week photographing for him. So we did uh, with Ivana. And now, you know, now we did, I did all the children's pictures and Ivanka, uh, who's amazing. And Jack, we, you Why know, was he, what, what did, what are you, what talk about Ivanka? She's, oh, she's a, just been a fabulous wife. Well, she's terrific. I, I think she's brilliant. Yeah. I think she's stunning. And we, we had a, a, a great relationship at this wedding. And what was her album like? Uh, did they do it like a huge album? No, yeah, they did multi. I mean, they had a lot of people and it was all, you know, again, dealing with the, the, you know, with the family, dealing with the celebrities and everybody's, you know, personalities. It was a, 
it was a, you know, big deal. And, you know, again, here was a little unusual that we were very, you know, close with the groom's family and the bride's family. Uh-huh. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's partially getting all the decor that was being done. I, uh, Preston Bailey did the, the, the floral decoration. Where, where, where was it? Where was it? It was at his country club, uh, Bedminster. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and they, it was wild. They, they, they uh, covered a parking lot and they had these, uh, you know, the light, the big uh, street lamps, like, to light up the parking lot, they had to take them all out of the parking lot to cover it and build a, a floor, and it was it was it was over the top. Was, How many people were there? Like, like oh, yeah, four or five hundred. Four or five hundred, and yeah. it was what was the the night like? It was uh, it was just uh, oh, it was beautiful. I mean, yeah. I know what, the wedding was wonderful. It, it, it was brilliant. I mean, the whole thing was terrific. Oh, and it was funny, you know. So here, talk about you, know, you talk about social media. So Ivanka said, you know, I said, what do you want to do? Because I always ask, and, and you know, I don't want to be the one. And I, I, I'm not prepared. So before the wedding, I said, are you going to be interested in, in, in putting up some photographs or are the newspapers going to work? Oh, she says, yeah, I'm glad you asked. You know, I need uh, uh, photographs for the New York Post wants to do a thing. Happened to be, uh, uh, you yeah, know, it was the end of October. So it had to be, it, I think it was the last game of the World Series. If it wasn't for the last game of the World Series, I would have had the front page and four other pages. We had like three or four pages in the post. And every half hour, I would go over to Ivanka and said, look at these pictures. I pulled a few pictures. I said, look, at these. that's the beauty of digital. I could never yeah, do yeah. this with film. I pull, you know, and, and I said, do you like these? Oh, these are amazing, you know, and she loved it. As a matter of fact, um, I, I can show it to you after. I have a, a, a post the, from the president uh, last October. Um, I think her, her wedding was October 25th or 6th, I think. She posted a picture from, of, from the wedding one of our photographs was posted by him on, on, you know, online and say, you know, happy anniversary. And they, they're still using the picture. And she posted also. What was the picture? What, what it, was, it was just a, a beautiful what portrait. What would have been the picture on the front page of the New York Post? The, her, just the, the, no, they put the up wedding the, her itself? portrait. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, put, the no, not picture. so much the, the, the ceremony. That's private. And right. most people don't want that. Right. But uh, a beautiful portrait of the bride and girl. Oh, these pictures were like, we, we, I will say, exceeded our, you know, greatest expectations here. We really, everybody knocked themselves out. And where uh, do they, where do they live now, those things? Are, are they, did the fam, did the family keep them in digitally or, sure. they, or they have the lots no, of albums? No, no, they, well, uh, I don't think she even has the digital files. She has albums and the parents have albums. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. you have all the digital files yeah. and all that. Yeah. You keep all that yeah. stuff. What, what, um, any other sort of like people that you can actually talk about that, uh, no, that we you have, can... uh, you know, uh, you know, we did, uh, years ago, Eddie Murphy's wedding. You talked about that. No, 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 but I'm just saying at, at that wedding, there were three things that he did that were very funny. He was a tough guy to work with, but three things, not, not, not nasty or anything like that, right, right, right. but just, uh, you know, he, he's, 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 uh, you know, he's a star and, and that's great. But he did three things at the wedding that were really funny. And we captured all three of them. And we had no idea they were happening, just so you know. And he was so impressed after the wedding that he was, you know, like, wow. You know, he's, I can't believe you guys got this. And it was just, you know, it, it was fun. That was a great wedding, to, you know, just to photograph. What did he do? What was the- One of the things was in the, in the middle of the ceremony, um, he, uh, the, the uh, Reverend um, uh, Calvin Butts. Oh, yeah. The, right? yeah. Okay. He did the ceremony. I don't know how I remember that, but he did. So he did the ceremony and he said, you know, does anybody here uh, uh, object to these two getting married? And at that point, Eddie Murphy turned around with such a grimace on his face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who, who's going to say something? And it was hysterical. But we caught it from the back of the room. So you see the whole audience and his face. And he flipped for that. And uh, he did something funny when he walked into the dinner. There was something else. But we got all three things. And he was like, just really impressed that we caught it. It's just being, oh, and I'll tell you what else we got on that. Um, uh, uh, something to be very proud of. No, it was uh, Howard Stern was there with O.J. Simpson. And we took a picture of Howard Stern and O.J. Simpson together, which Howard wiggled from me for a less than nominal fee to use for his book. And he, they never told me it was going to be the back of the fly leaf on the book. So the back of his, I forgot the name of the book, whatever, the back of the book is a full picture of Howard Stern and O.J. Simpson saying, getting away with murder. So oh, you're, you're kidding. No, that's on his book now. You can get it at the bookstore. And it has photo credit and everything. 
big big to us is getting photo credits, not so much getting money for this stuff because right, I really right, right. I don't care. Right? Uh, did you do the other Trump Trump weddings? The uh, I did not the, do. The, uh, no, I did. Um, yeah, I did. Uh, uh, Marlo? No. A Marla wedding, yeah. Marla, I, Marla Maples. Yeah, and Trump? Yeah, that I did. Was that was that? a very, because uh, they had... Uh, that they, was the one down in... Uh, they Bar- had the baby, Tiffany, was born before the wedding, and nobody knew about this. That was but, the one in, in Florida, right? At, uh, no, 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 that was Mar-a-Lan- Melania. Oh, Melania, that's the one that Hillary Melania went to. Melania was in Florida. Did you do that I one? I did not do, because he wanted it done for free. I don't do free, so oh. that's a celebrity thing. He, he got more into that. That's something that gets me crazy. Yeah. But he got more into that as time went on. It's yeah. Like I got paid for the uh, 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 Marla wedding and uh, magnificent pictures. Where was the Marla wedding at the Plaza? Who did that? Planned who was the week. Who was the designer? Um, I will. I know who the florist was. Who was the florist? Atlas? Okay, Atlas Floral and uh, Hank Lee Music did the music, and they had caviar like crazy there. Uh, and what else was there? Who? Uh, that's about it. You know, uh, music, flowers. We did the photography and video. Um, we did some funny stuff. We did. We we, we do. We do some crazy. Like what did you do? No, no. I, I, you know, <laughs> let's go back. You know what we did. We, I did it for for uh, Trump also, but I did it for Eddie Murphy even better. What we did was we. This was a big wedding at the time. I mean, it's a big celebrity yeah. Eddie Murphy. We literally had our videographers record every single news channel. Uh, you know, let's say ten different news programs. So you know. So the video started off today. Eddie Murphy got married, you know, at the Plaza Hotel. And it was, it was, we just took little snippets from all these things, put it together in a little collage. And it was fantastic. And he loved this. We took newspapers, all the newspapers that came. We, we took the head, you know, Eddie Murphy gets married and we just, you know, we photographed it and put it in. And those little things that make the difference between just, Shooting the wedding, like it's like anybody else's wedding. So when when you do when you present the the videos, yeah. do you actually go to the client and sit there and watch it with them? I, uh, in many I cases? normally um, on occasion on a big one like this, uh, you know, yeah, I would probably. Did you do it for 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 a vodka and Jared? Uh, no, I just said that they just got it and they were they were very happy. The video was really beautiful. They were really happy with it. And I, yeah. You know, no issues. No, we, I don't even think we had any changes on it, which is unusual. Most people like to tweak. Oh it yeah, a little yeah, everybody bit. wants to. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So what advice do you have now to the up and coming photographer? Now you, let me start before. <laughs> run, run. Run, get away from it. But the 75 years, okay. Yeah. How many people of those four or five people that were in the yellow pages yeah. are still doing what you guys are doing today? Is there any, who is it's, your competitors that are still out it's, there? Uh, it's, it's, it's said, um, actually, uh, uh, one of my uh, competitor who I happen to like, um, uh, just passed away and uh, this just a couple of days ago and um, sad story his son is running the business now but he's uh, you know there are nobody there's nobody left I mean I know the names I mean look Bradford Backrack Bradford Backrack that was the big name done I mean yeah he did you know all the fancy wedding out of business Uh, there was another guy in Manhattan Balachet out of business for 30 years probably and then uh, this particular photographer who just passed away I mean the son is running it now but this is my you know I don't we're in such a little niche area that it's it's, you know there are people who try and there are people you know I've had people who've left me you know in in our business I probably started a whole little cottage industry of wedding photography are any of those still going are they I mean you know some of them are going but not like you know they're in uh, you know South Jersey somewhere you know it's not right. the same clientele it's right. a different business and today the, you know it you know the advice I would give somebody is I mean you got to know your stuff and, and a lot of photographers just don't it becomes too easy it becomes you you don't have because to know of lighting. the instant cameras yeah, and the- you don't have to know lighting you don't have to know posing it, it you know it's just snapshots there's just no personal touch to it and that's the big thing with us is that we i have fun with my clients i want them to be you know excited about what they're doing we do crazy stuff and and and, you know it's it's all understanding what's going on at a wedding and and knowing what's going to happen and a lot of people don't care they're just there you're out shooting yourself yeah i still do it believe it or not not as much but i do it but you, and you have to have a rapport with the people. Yeah, totally. I mean, it sounds like that personality is the key. I mean, you've got this effervescent personality and people, oh, you know, trust you. you and things like that. And it's, it's important, it, right? The trust part is the most important. Yeah. That, they, that people know that if they come to us, they will be guaranteed of beautiful photographs. I do not have people coming to me that say they're not happy with their photographs. That, that is 
key. Um, we do uh, a limited number of parties. I don't do unlimited numbers. Uh, some photographers, I know photographers in New York that uh, don't have any photographers working for them, just call friends. Oh, oh I have another party? Uh, Joey, are you free next Saturday? Oh, yeah, okay, go go to the plaza and photograph away. Have no idea what they do, the quality of what they do, and I, I don't know how they can even do that in good conscience to send somebody. Um, one of our competitors just kind of... Um, I'll use the word downsize, I mean, not go out of business, but a big competitor of ours just downsized his business to almost nothing. So it's basically him, which is great for us. All of a sudden, we got really busy because, you know, he used to do well, five or six uh, uh, parties on a weekend, and now we can only do one because it's I, him. I've heard the concept that the, called the, f- and the vendors in the business are frienders, that are people that they just hired their friend to do the photography. That's what I'm, what I'm saying. That's and a good so word, is, that, is that what's happening? It's ha- not, not with us, but it happens with uh, a lot of photographers, believe me. And it's scary. I'm going like, and, and people say, well, you know, or they tell me, oh, I'm using so-and-so and they're charging, you know, half of what you charge. I said, but who's the photographer? Is, is the owner doing it? Oh, no, they're getting, so- I said, well, who? And it's, it's crazy. Can you shoot a wedding now with an iPhone? You know, that's very, that's, you know, actually, I want to do that. I, I probably could. Um, I've never, t- I mean, I shoot pictures when I'm photographing. I do take pictures with the iPhone so we can post if, if somebody wants, uh, you know, some social media and so on. And I'm good at it. And I've never done a whole wedding, but that's on my uh, bucket list to do a wedding, you know, as a second photographer, but go around and just shoot the wedding with an iPhone and get, ama- you know, some really amazing, and then, you know, do my thing with the pictures. I'm good with the iPhone. And the last thing I want to end with is that I've been preaching at my talks around, around everything, every, around the North America, actually I've been speaking a lot on right. how everything is now about breaking the fourth wall. So it's no longer about the front of the set, but it's behind the scenes. Are you, can you validate that this is what's happening? Uh, that people want the photography of what's going on behind the scenes as opposed to what's going on out on the That's ballroom it. or in the... Okay, so uh, I, I would say no, but I do it on large weddings where you have, um, uh, you know, huge setups. So if you do a wedding, for example, in someone's home and they're having 500 people on their lawn and they set up a kitchen tent... I don't know if you've ever seen that. It is the most amazing thing and yeah. how they, how they, how they played everything. Yeah. And I'll go, you know, I'll send, you know, either myself or I'll send one of my guys into the kitchen and make sure they get those shots. Yeah. A hundred percent. Or getting, you know, there's beautiful flowers and buckets all over and then, you know, so you get a before and after. Right, right. Uh, many times what we do with our videos are, are time lapse videos now of setups. So if I see a, that, you know, there's going to be a huge, uh, you know, uh, decor, you, uh, you know, we, you do things with, for example, um, uh, you mentioned names before, before we got, went on here, uh, David Stark or, uh, you know, uh, these are guys that are, you know, do huge setups. And, uh, you know, it's amazing to get, we've done parties. We did one in, in Palm Springs, I, uh, in Palm Springs a couple of years ago that was like with, with David that was like, I said, how do you even, you know, he takes an empty room and makes it into like, the, the, you know, they should never take this down. It's, it's, it's fantastic what yeah, you get. Yeah, People pay, you know, a zillion dollars to have this done and it's just spectacular. Great. Let's end on what's the future? That's a good question. I think the future is um, uh, much more, uh, you know, being selective in getting the right clients to understand what you're doing and giving them the best product and having people that are willing to pay for it. And that, uh, you know, I think a lot of photographers run scared and they kind of lower their price and lower their price and lower their price. And that, um, you cannot give somebody a, a, a good product that way. You can't hire great photographers. Um, my people at my, I, I don't cut back on anything. I'd rather lose money on something than give somebody an inferior uh, right, product. Right. So it's a big deal that, you know, for us, this after sale that we talked about is, is the most well, you have important. The lifetime value. I mean, your, your customers. I, I, I want them to come back over and over and they do. And that's, yes. that's the beauty of our business. Yes. Great. On that note, thank you so much, uh, Andy Marcus. Uh, we will uh, watch the future and see what happens with your company. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we're back in our studio. Um, one thing I appreciated was that Andy is really sticking up for the technical skills that a photographer has and that iPhone wielding guests do not. Uh, and it was also, so that was an interesting point. And then also, um, 
who owns what in terms of the files and, and what a photographer brings to that process rather than handing over raw files, what, uh, what their technical skill is able to achieve in working with those files before handing them over to the client. Well, now it's all gray, right? Everything is gray. <laughs> Everything is in a gray area. Uh, and With regard to ownership? With regard to ownership. If you take it to court, then it's not so gray, I assume. Right. Well, uh, well, I think one of the points though is that you spell it out in the contract what you're turning over. Yeah. yeah. Is it is it the raw files? Is it the retouched photographs? What do you want? What what are they willing? Yeah. The the photographers willing to give because maybe they don't want to hand over those raw files. Right. Uh, so it was it was spell it out beforehand. It was also interesting that they make most of their money on the presentation piece as opposed to just the photography. Um, I also am really wedding photographers are doing really really well. They seem to be able to charge more than corporate photographers, and so that's why you're seeing this rush into the into the into the wedding business. And there's a lot of hipsters and cool people and style meisters and things like that that are doing weddings. They want your wedding photographer to be a celebrity in many cases, mm, or make you look like, or one. make you look like one exactly. Uh, another well, and this is related to that, but an important note I thought was when he talked about kind of negotiating the relationship between client or the bride or groom, the planner. And then the photographer. And so Andy wants the, the direct access to the client, nothing mediated. Right. And um, I can see that going a bunch of different ways, depending oh, yeah. on how much control the, oh, the yeah. planner wants yep. to relinquish. Yep. Um, but from Andy's point of view, that's what can lead to more business for yeah, them. Yeah, that's right? that lifetime value of the customer. Um, yeah. I guess, I mean, I understand his point because the personal nature of photography yeah. means that you really do want to know that person and, and have their personality is becoming through in the photographs yeah. more so than say a, a sound or lighting um, that can work directly with, with the planner. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So Beth, what's going on at BizBash? Well, you know, David, I know you remember the events that we used to call idea fests and I'm thinking of our editorial coverage more and more like idea fests that exist online because our, our, especially our recent coverage of the, the Met Gala, um, upfronts with that sangria wall that took off on Instagram, uh, to conference ideas for that, from two recent shows we covered one in Orlando, one in Miami. Um, so, so many ideas for planners and all to be found at, at bizbash.com or get delivered to your email with our BizBash Daily Newsletter. I mean, it's interesting that we used to cover individual events and now people do want an aggregation of lots of ideas as opposed to... It's both. We we do both because there still definitely is, is a place for the individual event report, one event that blows our mind completely or that has uh, so many ideas that we want to get to. Um, but for something like Upfronts, first of all, there's so many of them. I think there would be reader fatigue. You know, who wants to read a bunch of individual stories about them when we can be the curators and take the best ideas from the all of these multiple events and distill them into one piece for you. Have you seen what sort of what comes out at the end in terms of the ideas that that really work? Do you have as an editor, do you sort of see from these pictures that you're getting what engages people? Sure. I think Instagram's a great a great way to instantly see what clicks with people. And what I love in our Instagram comments are not when people say like, cool, we know it's cool because that's why we are presenting it to you. But when people tag other people or say, we need to do this, or this would be a great idea for this event that we're doing this fall, or remember this for our conference. And so um, I think that that is the value of BizBash right there when people are connecting with each other over the ideas and um, figuring out how they can adapt them for their own events. Yeah. That's why we exist. That's right. Well, as usual, before we end, we like to thank all the people involved in creating uh, the Gather Geeks podcast. Claire Hoffman, who's our editor and does all the editorial duties for the podcast. Uh, Rebecca Pappas, who's in charge of getting it out to you and the distribution. And, of course, Dave Nelson, our producer. So with that, what do we say, Beth? Gather on. Gather on. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a reading and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at Gather Geeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you'll join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. Gather on.